So now having understood the basics of refractive errors, now we'll focus on the major refractive errors and try to understand what are the questions which we need to be aware of them and how to answer those questions. And uh, also to understand them, we need to make an effort and uh, that we will together do so that uh, these things fix to your mind and uh, be helpful during your examination. The first refractive error which I'm going to introduce to you is hypermetropia, which is also called hyperopia and colloquially called long sightedness. Here we have already defined it. We said parallel rays of light when the refraction, when the accommodation of the patient is at rest. Accommodation is at rest means the ciliary zonules are not stiff and the accommodative mechanism is not exerted. The ciliary uh, apparatus is quiet. In that state, parallel rays of light are brought to a focus behind the retina, behind the retina. Why should this happen? Why should it go behind the retina? The reason it goes behind the retina is that here there is multiple, multiple possibilities of this refractive error being because of something which the eye is suffering as an organ. For example, the eye can be small. The eye can be small. If the eye is small, then obviously the, the uh, refractive system will tend to project an image behind. Can you see here? Can you see here the image is going behind the retina and that going behind the retina is because the eyeball is very small. Can you see the eyeball is small? Normally, the eyeball should be somewhere around 24 millimeters. Okay, 24 millimeters is the normal length of the eyeball. And uh, like uh, certain times, if you look at hyperopic eye, the eyeball will be only 22 millimeters or even lesser than that. That kind of smaller eyeball is a possibility. Second is uh, curvature. If the cornea is very flat, if the cornea is very flat, we'll presume there is a condition in the baby called cornea plana where the corneal curvature is very flat. In that situation also, the patient will become hypermetropic. But here, the, if you check the axial length of the eye, the axial length of the eye will be normal. Only the curvature is short. And that curvature being flat creates that kind of a hyperopic status. Index. What is index? The best example is cortical cataract. The patient uh, uh, develops a cortical cataract in his lens. There is a cortical cataract developed in his lens. Because of the cortical cataract, the patient tends to uh, create an image which is like uh, uh, focusing behind the retina and that is called an hyperopic state. So that is a question usually in cataract even you will be questioned like a cortical cataract, what refractive error the patient usually tend to have and you will have to say that patient should have a hypermetropic error which will be corrected with convex lenses. Okay, absence of the crystalline lens. Can you identify this situation? Aphakia, we discussed, no, in cataract, we discussed in detail. We said the old method of intracapsular cataract extraction creates an aphakic state. And in that aphakic state, the child, uh, the sorry, the, the patient becomes uh, hyperopic in that that patient develops um, a refractive state where the parallel rays of right are focused behind the retina. So this you need not worry. This you don't need to worry. I don't want you to know these things. At least these, these instances of hyperopic state you will have to remember. Similarly, hyperopic eye, what are the specialities in an hyperopic eye is a usual question. In fact, 9 out of 10 times that will be the question. You will have to say the anterior chamber will be very shallow. The anterior chamber will be very shallow and the eyeball itself will be very small. So small eyeball, shallow anterior chamber. So shallow anterior chamber is associated with what eye uh, disease? Angle closure glaucoma, isn't it? Angle closure glaucoma, angle closure glaucoma. So angle closure glaucoma is associated with this kind of a shallow anterior chamber in a, in a small eyeball, in a small eyeball. Okay. Next, if you look at the fundus of these uh, persons, the disc margin, can you see the blurring of the disc margin? Can you see? This is like... In a normal person, the disc margin will be very crisp and distinct. Here, if you see the disc margin, at least the disc margin, the nasal margin, you can see a bit better. Can you see? A bit better. But the temporal margin is totally fuzzy. And this is called this, this kind of disc margin not being uh, seen properly. And the disc being slightly edematous is called pseudopapilledema. Pseudopapilledema. In fact, the disc itself is very crowded and it is very small, very small. And if you see this retina, the retina will be like a silk cloth. It will be like a silk cloth. It will be shining like anything. And that kind of a short silk retina 
is characteristic of an hyperopic eye. Okay. So what do you do for them? The best thing you have to give them is convex lenses. You have to give them convex lenses. By giving convex lenses, by giving convex lenses, I get the image focused perfectly on the retina. Can you see here? Previously, the retina, the, the image is forming behind the retina in a normal uh, state of an hyperopic person. So I have corrected it with uh, plus lenses. This can be plus one, plus two, plus three, plus four, plus 0.5, whatever. We have to find out that. And once you give that, then the person will have a proper focus of the image. And that is uh, that is a good correction which the patient can get. And this can be done with either spectacles, which is done conventionally, or contact lenses if the patient can uh, go through the uh, rigors of wearing a contact lenses. Okay. Uh, certain times the patients will not want both, or rather they would have used it for years and say, "Sir, I'm bored of my contact lenses. I'm bored of my spectacles. I want to uh, go for a procedure where you remove the hypermetropia totally." That kind of procedure, please remember hypermetropic LASIK. Okay. Please remember hypermetropic LASIK. Even if you forget the other things, I don't bother. Conductive keratoplasty is uh, conductive keratoplasty is uh, very important. But even if you forget it, I don't bother. But hypermetropic LASIK, you please remember. So this is the story of hypermetropia. I have taken you and told you what it is like to have uh, a refractive error like hyperopia. What are the what are the possibilities of uh, the cardial curvature or the axial length or the index of the lens being wrong and hyperopia occurring? And in those patients, what is the real trouble they face? And if you look at the eye closely in these patients, what do you have? Do you have a short eyeball, a shallow anterior chamber, a short silk retina? And uh, in these patients, if you give them glasses or contact lenses, do they get better? And uh, what is the LASIK procedure that can be done for them? So this is the story of hyperopia. Thank you.